All right, let's check out our next movie, The Cult of Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, no, because I'm going to tell you right now, all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put this movie back together again. I am not doing this intro. It's all you. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. This movie was terrible. I don't even want to review this movie. Let's not. Okay. Too bad. So then you do the intro, Darren. Fine. Fine. This week on Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks, your host, Dan and Amanda, will be reviewing that classic movie, The Cult of Humpty Dumpty 2. Or, it's also known as The Curse of Humpty Dumpty. Why? We don't know. It doesn't matter. You can't find any information of this movie. This is actually a trilogy of three movies. This is the middle one. Mm -hmm. There's The Curse of Humpty Dumpty, The Cult of Humpty Dumpty, and The Madness of Humpty Dumpty. We picked this film because it is bad. It's, if you're a fan of classically bad movies, Birdemic, Trolls 2, The Room, Rubber, any Neil Breen movie ever made ever, this is a must watch. Must watch. I was crying with laughter. You will learn so much from this movie. How not to shoot a movie. What angles not to use. What lights not to use when to use a light. <laughs> Continuity? Continuity. Not needed. So over, so overrated. Totally fine. And, and they're in this park with a bunch of cars and they're going, we have no way to get out. None. When I'm looking at a brand new Mercedes. Brand so, new. And I, there 30 was a Range cars. Rover too. Yeah. 30 different cars. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was awesome. You need to see this movie. Absolutely. Or at least watch the review with Dan and Amanda. So yes. please enjoy the curse or cult of, of Humpty, Humpty Dumpty. Dumpty. Thank you. So polite. Oh. I know. Shout out to my good friend Christian Blatt for his YouTube show as our sponsor today called The Blattcast. That's B-L-A-D-T-C-A-S-T, which can be found on YouTube and wherever you listen to your streaming podcast shows. His show focuses on pop culture with an emphasis on movies, television, and music. Some of his past guests have been Steve Carell, Seth MacFarlane, Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, Dennis Miller, and Dave Perner of Soul Asylum and so many more. Definitely check that show out, guys. We got this movie set out in the woods in a, a little cultish type setting. Mm -hmm. Basically, there is this haunted doll they call Humpty Dumpty that's supposedly some old god and they need to sacrifice people to feed him. So this is where they bring in a group of girls and tell them it's some kind of camp that's going to make them better and happy. And yeah, I can't say enough great things about this movie. I mean, I laughed. I cried. It was better than Cats, better than E.T., I mean, wow, how this didn't get an Academy Award. I, I just don't understand. Like, how are people... No, this movie was terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Please do not watch it. Emphasis on the cried, for sure. And a group of out-of-control teenagers, because yeah. they're on their cell phones, mm -hmm. have to go to this green cleanse place. Yes. I mean, and the guy that plays the lead, um, ter just terrible. It's, the, it, it's these little trailers, and the girls have to go, and they have to clean the trailers. Right, as punishment. Yeah, that's their punishment. Yeah. And that scene where they're given, so they're rewarded for doing such a great job with cleaning the trailers, that they all go to this open field with, you know, in the forest with the trees, and they're supposed to do this dance. And they're doing this meditation. Oh my God, and yeah. they're in the circle, like kumbaya, and they're going back and forth. And the cinematography, I got nauseous during that scene with the with the back and forth going like this. It was terrible. Yeah, the, the footage alone was terrible. I mean, you look, the, the scenes were shot in so many different types of yeah, light and dark yes. and, and, and just Ugh. blurriness and then an in focus, not in focus. You had the sound it was like, some of it sounded like it was, you know, the, the boom was in a tin can. <laughs> yes. Yes. Then there were like points where you're talking about what the sun was here, then the sun was here, then it was dark, then it wasn't dark. It's like, how long did it take you to film the scene? Oh, you want to talk inconsistencies. This movie's filled with them. Oh, yeah. The whole movie's an inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Jagged Edge, Edge Productions did not do a good job on this one. But I will say that the first one, the 
So they, this is a trilogy, but I'll tell you the first one, The Curse, when I was looking up some information, which was really hard to find, you literally could not find any information out about this movie. There was an IMDb page that had like four lines on it. That was about all it was getting. And- No, was that the first? The first one they did, was that The Curse? The Curse was the first one. So The Curse, you actually could find information out about. The Curse, I went back and watched it because some reviewers said it was actually good. I know, but- Believe it or not, it really wasn't that bad, you guys. So I'm gonna say, if you don't want to waste your time watching The Cult, take some time and watch The Curse. It really wasn't bad. Actually, I guess maybe it's only because I watched The Cult and anything compared to that is gonna be what? Academy Award winning cinema. The Curse really wasn't bad. You don't, did you watch it? Hell no. I had to watch that piece of garbage to begin with. Anyway, so I did go go and watch The Curse and The Curse was actually pretty good. I'll tell you, the acting was better in that film. The Humpty Dumpty in that one, so that living doll was actually done way better. There were actually a few jump scares in The Curse. The storyline behind The Curse was way more believable. The cinematography was better. The editing was better. I mean, it really wasn't a bad watch. So why, why? If this one was so bad, what would make you want to venture off into the other ones? Because I heard reviews, I heard it was actually pretty good, and I wanted all of you viewers to know the truth. So I was willing to sacrifice an hour and 45 minutes of my time so that you didn't have to waste yours. Hey folks, you know what I like to do? And I'm sure you do too. Sit in your dentist chair with no Novocaine and have your teeth pulled. Because that's exactly what you'll feel like while watching The Cult of Humpty Dumpty. Did you finish it? Of course I finished. <laughs> Unwillingly. So, Did it for you guys. <laughs> so Dan, being that we're talking about the fact that we hated it, do you have a scene that was your least favorite that just like took you completely out more than anything else? Least favorite? <laughs> In most of my reviews, I try to remain as positive as possible. I will mm -hmm. always find something positive in the worst movies, but this one was tough. But I will say one scene towards the end when the girl is being held by the cult members and all that stuff is gonna happen. She twists it around and gets the cult members killed by Humpty mm -hmm. in a way that really didn't make sense though because her sacrifice was an abortion she had prior to ever even going in this place. So somehow they were able to use her sacrifice mm -hmm. as um, her power over Humpty which again, didn't make sense because it had nothing to do with her before she got there. But if I had to pick something positive, that little spin they put on that, I, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I liked about the movie were the flashbacks. That was it. <laughs> I thought the flashbacks were better because they give you a little bit of backstory about the lead. But otherwise, I mean, even the scene that you're talking about where the, the, the script got flipped, the acting in that scene was... It was terrible, you guys. And I'm not somebody to, to ever put down acting. I think acting is a craft and it's it's not an easy thing to do, but these people, they didn't bring it. <laughs> I, Putting it lightly. I think a lot of them seemed untrained and it's mm -hmm. not their fault. And I think some of them as well, which is also not their fault. It almost seemed like they were given the script to learn their lines about a half hour before yes. cameras rolled. Yes. A lot of them just didn't seem to have it down. So they mm -hmm. were talking like William Shatner, you know, it's a, oh, look, Humpty Dumpty is over there. Mm -hmm. It was just bad. And I don't, again, I don't blame the actors 100%. I think they were probably rushed. They only had the location for a certain time. Mm -hmm. Everything was just like, okay, your cast, your cast, your cast, we shoot in two days. Be off script. Get ready and then just throw them to the wolves. And it showed, like, just the yeah. fact that they were all unprepared really showed in this movie. Mm -hmm. The my f One of my other favorite things about this movie was the little montage in the beginning where the girl's putting the doll back together. That actually got me a little bit excited about the film, and then it was all downhill from there. Yeah, no, that didn't get me excited about the film at all. <laughs> I was in so much pain watching this movie, I needed ibuprofen to get me through the rest. It was pretty bad. So we know that it was a more recent horror film. Do you know what year the movie came out? Uh, no. Okay, it was 2022. So really recent. 
Now, <laughs> comparing this movie to other films that have come out recently, including one that we just reviewed, Willy's Wonderland, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely check out that review. Can, is there even a way to put them into the same universe or the same category? You're talking about horror versus horror? How dare you? Right? You're, wait, you're talking about trying to put Willy's Wonderland compared to Humpty? No, but it was right around the same time is what I'm saying. That was in a year before. You're putting something that we both, you know, have a great review about. I don't want to spoil it. Budget to this, I actually couldn't even find. So the only thing I have to go by is the original, which was The Curse. Right. Which was at around a hundred thousand dollar budget. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna assume for this one, given the quality, for me, I would just take a guess and say half of that, like fifty k. I mean, if they spent a hundred thousand on something you said was decent, yeah, and then they made this, I'm gonna assume the budget was even lower. Mm -hmm. But like, like I said, you cannot find a lot of information on these films. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the curse did have a hundred thousand dollar budget. It was a, considered a micro budget. That film, if if you can believe this, the curse actually wound up making over a million dollars. So it really, I'm telling you, it was pretty good. I know you're saying, oh, it was decent. No, it was actually a little bit better than decent. All three main actresses in that film, the, the mother, Wendy, and then the two daughters, they were great. They carried that film. I also thought that the way that Humpty was portrayed in The Curse, they did a really great job with that as well. It was that creepy doll that you every time you saw that doll, man, you were just waiting for the hand to move. There was a scene where the daughter Liz is in the hallway and it's at night. The Humpty doll is in the hallway sitting there at night and she's walking through the hallway and she's standing near the doll and you're just waiting for something to move. or something. And then the Humpty, the eye just goes... It's like creepy, but it was good creepy. It was like you were waiting for it and kind of like have the covers pulled up over you, like up to your chin, like waiting for something scary to happen. But then she takes the Humpty doll and puts it in her mother's room. Cause the mother's the one in the first one, the mother's the one that really wanted the doll. I think the ex-husband had gotten it for her or something or the husband. There was a whole storyline behind that too with the first one where the mother, they think she's starting to get dementia. So she's starting to lose it. But she had gotten the doll years ago and the doll like possessed her. She ended up killing the husband. Wild. So like this all comes out throughout the story, but it was really Humpty doing it. And then of course the doll's back and now she gets possessed again with the doll and then all these killings start happening. And she's like, it's not me, it's Humpty. It's, like, it's freaky though. Like the killings were great. All the characters in the movie, they did a great job. You know, there was no, the only thing that was lacking was the shopkeeper. Who she wasn't, she wasn't that believable, but every other character in the film, they really were able to carry the film. It was great. There were jump scares. Like that was still not like a classic horror for me, but it still was a really great film. They did a great job with the budget. It was in this house, like an older house. The whole movie was set in the older house, and they did it just, I really liked it. I, and I think maybe it's just because I watched. The cult. See, the way you're describing the curse makes me want to see it. It sounds good. But then why did they do this piece of garbage next? Yeah, I don't It's know. usually reversed. You make the piece of garbage first, and then you improve it the next time around. Why did you go backwards? That I don't know. I don't know if it was the change in, you know, the writers, the change in editors, things like that. I don't know if that had something to do with it. I went to look up the directors to see if the directors were the same. You know, a lot of the cast and the crew it all changed. So I don't know if something happens in there. Yeah, I know there's about five, could be even more actors that are associated with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey mm -hmm. with this film. Yeah, it was the, the redheaded lead. Was she in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey too? I have to go to my notes for this one because <laughs> there is a lot, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah. It's very heavy. So we have the guy who played uh, Humpty himself is Bo Tu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I may have just butchered that. Um, he was in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey as a reporter. Okay. And oddly enough, he was in Jurassic World. Oh, That's pretty wow. cool. He had a little, yeah, he was, uh, fact. he was an intern uh, that you see in one of the scenes. But then we have, uh, Jillian Broderick, uh, who was Winnie the therapist, um, uh, who was not in Winnie the Pooh, so I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but uh, Mae Kelly, 
who played Rebecca, she was in Winnie the Pooh as Tina. And then Kelly Ryan Sanson, who played Lisa, was in Winnie the Pooh 2, Blood and Honey. So, I mean, there's a lot of connections to those mm -hmm. two. And there's also a connection between another great series with this company that were called Jack in the Box. Oh. And part three just came out, I think, at the beginning of this month which I haven't seen it yet, but I really enjoyed the first two. For some independent horror films, they do some good ones. And obviously with Humpty, some bad ones. But uh, So they were. this was all Jagged Edge? That yeah. That did the Jack in the Box also? Yeah, so I, I highly recommend the Jack in the Box series. Mm. Although I can't speak for the third one just yet. So there were a few scenes that I think that we have to dive into if we're talking about whether this movie <laughs> was... Do we, do we really, though? What was your least favorite scene? Do you have one of those? All of them. <laughs> Every inch of... No. Like I said, I, I don't... I think this film just felt rushed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's terrible as just, you know, a, a film in itself, the storyline and stuff. They all have potential. But I think it was rushed. I think the actors were rushed. So I'm not blaming anybody in, in that aspect. I'm not just tearing this movie apart for nothing. Um... You got Humpty, who looks like a doll in one scene, but then you can clearly see it's a person in a suit in another. Mm -hmm. I mean, he keeps changing sizes. Let me jump into this one, all right? You got the scene after the first two girls are, are disappeared, right? I'll just say disappeared. The remaining three go into this RV and read this book. And I don't tell you where the book came from until a little bit later, but it's like, why would you not mention anything that's going on? She just randomly has this book. Oh, it's got a couple pictures of Humpty in it. Okay. Well, the camera and the lighting was so bad on this. The light was directly on the book she was reading. The camera was right on the book she was reading. And she turns the pages and there's no more pictures of Humpty. So what does she do? She takes her finger and she's reading blank pages. Mm -hmm. Three of them. As she turns another blank page mm -hmm. and she... Great acting job, make them pretend you're reading, but why was the camera focused so clearly on blank pages where you can clearly see her looking, mm. there's nothing there. It wasn't even a book, it looked like a planner, didn't it? Yeah, a little dollar store planner. Yeah, come on. I mean, use a little bit of the budget on that. Right. <laughs> Especially if you're gonna right. be focused on it, like you said. And then that kill scene with the redhead. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, she walks into the shower fully clothed. She's wearing sneakers a towel, and then she leaves her phone outside, and then Humpty comes over and gets the phone with a shaky hand, starts taking pictures of himself. He's doing selfies, the Humpty self. Right, come on. I mean, is that is that what the killer, the crazy scary killer, is that what he's gonna mm -hmm. do? I mean, obviously I get it. He doesn't know what a, a cell phone is, because he's... A doll. Yeah. A possessed doll. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I see where they were going with it, and just... Wasn't executed very well. Mm -mm, didn't work. And then there's also that scene where the lead character, the male, I don't remember his name because I don't know if, maybe I didn't want to remember it. I don't really know. But he's telling the girls about what they have to do in order to have a successful stay at the Green Cleanse, which is where they are. It is the most long drawn out speech of him explaining what's happening. And he's dragging out his words. Girls. Every if... time he talked, it was a long, drawn out monologue. Yeah. Every time. And it was low tone. And then oh, and then when he when he calls the um the woman, like the head of the girls, the girl one that's keep taking care of them, Mrs. Mrs. Whatever, and they're like, mm -hmm. like they're mm -hmm. like they definitely have something going on between the two of them. The other thing that kind of bugged me is, look, I get it with a lot of independent horror movies, the rubber mass, they can work. They can. Oh. But it was so dollar store mass that they used for this guy that, and, and I get that too, and that's even acceptable. You can make that work in some films with the lighting and, and the tone of the movie, but this was just like, mm -hmm. he had rubber teeth. So when you see him like biting into somebody, they show it close up with his rubber teeth like bending against the skin. Why? It was, it was why terrible. would you? Why did you do that? <laughs> and I, everything was still related to just like fake blood that you would buy in a dollar store. Not even like theatrical fake blood. This was just, you know, somebody gets cut. Uh, the next thing you see is a little painted line of, of fake blood mm -hmm. on their arm. That, that was all the gore in the movie. Yeah. Very basic killing slash. Like it was very basic. 
And talking about that mask, it looked like a bait when when Humpty changes and the mask comes out, it looks like a baby with tentacle teeth. Honestly, when I looked at it, it made me nauseous. I just saw rubber teeth. It's just weird. And this cult it didn't work. There, there's a cult for him. How is that possible? So these two are basically dragging people back to this camp to to feed the god Humpty. Mm -hmm. and, and you see them all sta standing in a circle in the black robes later on, and then, and then they're about to do the finalization ritual, and I guess that's where the cult comes in. I'm just yeah keeping Humpty alive, the old uh, Humpty god, just doing the, the Humpty hump out in the woods. <laughs> that's their ceremonial dance. The Humpty dance. It's a chance. To do the hump. Mm -hmm. So I did need to take a moment to look up, you know, the actual crew because I wanted to know if it was the same brilliant minds behind both films. I did see that the only person that was the same for both films was the writer, which was Scott Chambers. And I think that you heard a little bit about him as well. I mean, the, the- Scott Chambers was a producer on this and he was a producer on Winnie the Pooh 2, Blood and Honey, where he also played Christopher Robin. Oh, wow. So that's really interesting. So he he definitely is in it. Yeah, which was a mm -hmm. good movie. Good movie. Not not like this one. That was, that's, this movie bad. Bad movie. This movie bad. No no see. No see this movie is bad. So, Amanda. Yes, Dan. Would you stream this? Own it. <laughs> or drown it in butter. I actually would throw it at Darren and William for making us watch it. I agree. Yeah. Thank you all so much for struggling through this with us. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah, that was a struggle. Mm-hmm. But make sure that you join us next time where we'll be reviewing Ghoulies. See you then.